So why classify climate? Climate classifications help people to know what types of conditions a region usually experiences through the year, rather than having to describe the full range of conditions observing the region over each month or season of year. A classification scheme can communicate expected conditions using just two or three terms. Knowing a region's climate classification can be useful when choosing building materials for protection and durability, or when considering what crops are likely or unlikely to thrive in the region. For visitors, knowing a location's climate classification can help them to select appropriate clothing to pack. So let's discuss our learning goals. Explain difference between weather and climate. Understand empirical and generic climate classification. Define climate and understand the principal components of the Earth climate system. Identify and locate the principal climate categories in the world. Take a moment and think about the weather today where they are. It's normal or typical? It's what you expect? If it has been cold the past few days but the temperature is climbing today, is that weather or climate? Are weather and climate the same thing? So they are closely related, weather and climate aren't the same thing. Climate is what you expect, weather is what actually happens. So what exactly is the weather? More specifically, weather is the mix of events that happen each day in your atmosphere. Even though there is only one atmosphere on Earth, the weather isn't the same all around the world. Weather is different in different parts of the world and changes over minutes, hours, days, and weeks. Most weather happens in parts of the Earth's atmosphere that is close to the ground, called the troposphere. We have learned and discussed that before. And there are many different factors that can change the atmosphere in a certain area, like air pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction, and lots of other things. Together, they determine what the weather is likely at a given time and location. How about climate? Whereas weather offers the short-term changes in the atmosphere, climate describes what the weather is like over a long period of time in a specific area. Different regions can have different climates. To describe the climate of a place, we might say what the temperature are like during different seasons, how windy it usually is, how much rain or snow typically falls. When scientists talk about climate, they are often looking at the average of precipitation, temperature, humidity, sunshine, wind and other measures of weather that occur over a long period in a particular place. The division of the Earth climates into a worldwide system of continuous regions, each one of which is defined by relative elements or homogeneity with climate elements. The earliest known classification of climate devised by the Greeks simply divide each hemisphere into mathematical climate of the three zones, the summerless, intermediate, and the winterless. This account only for the latitudinal difference in solar effect. The old Greek word climate means inclination. You knew that? More rec recently, these zones have been labeled to torrid, temperate, and frigid zones. Another basic and much more approach recognizes other climate controls as well the sun. The result climates are called, with variations, polar, temperate, tropical, continental, marine, mountain, and probably others. Of the major climate classifications we use today, the Köppen 1918 and C.W. Tort White 1931 are referred the most often. Geographers recognize a number of factors that affect a region's climate. Latitude, elevation, proximity to large water bodies, mountains and other surface features, ocean circulation patterns, long-term atmospheric circulation. Together, 
these factors control the range of temperatures and the amount of rain and or snow each region receives through the year. These factors control climate and, in turn, climate controls ecology, the types of native plants and animals that live in the region. The climate of the region is ultimately determined by the radiation energy of the sun and its distribution and temporal fluctuations. The long-term state of the atmosphere is a function of a variety of interaction elements. They are solar radiation, air mass, pressure system and cyclone belts, ocean currents, topography. Let's discuss the first one, the solar radiation. So, is the radiation the energy we get from the sun? It's also known as the shortwave radiation. Solar radiation is probably the most important element of climate. Solar radiation first and foremost hits the Earth's surface, which in turn determines the temperature of the air above. The receipt of the solar radiation drives evaporation, so long as there is water available. Heating of the air determines its stability, which affects cloud development and precipitation. An equal heat of the Earth's surface creates pressure gradients that results in wind. Every location Earth receives sunlight at least part of the year. The amount of solar radiation that reaches any one spot on the Earth's surface varies according to geographical location, time of the day, season, local landscape, local weather, solar radiation, comes in many forms such as visible light, radio waves, heat, infrared, X-rays and ultraviolet rays. Measurements for solar radiation are higher and clear sunny day and usually low and cloudy days. When the sun is down or there are heavy clouds blocking the sun, solar radiation is measured at zero. Air masses and winds are another element you have control the characteristic of temperature, humidity and stability. Location relative to source region of air masses in part determines the variation of the day-to-day -day weather and long-term climate of a place. The pressure systems also produce a lot of elements like air pressure, the weight of air resistant to the Earth's surface. Air has a specific weight. This weight exerts by the air's atmospheric pressure, as we studied before. It's defined as the force per unit area exerts against a surface by the weight of air above the surface of the Earth's atmosphere. So pressure systems have a direct impact of precipitation. In generally, places dominated by the low pressure tends to be moist, while those dominated by the high pressure are dry. The seasonality of precipitation is affected by the season movement of global and regional pressure systems. Another ele element is the ocean currents. So the ocean currents greatly affect the temperature and precipitation of climate. Those climates bordering cold currents tend to be drier as the cold ocean water helps stabilize the air and inhibit cloud formation and precipitation. Air traveling over cold ocean currents lose energy to the water and thus moderate the temperature of nearby coastal locations. So also air masses traveling over the warm ocean currents promote instability and precipitation. Additionally, the warm ocean water keeps air temperatures somewhat warmer than locations just inland from the coast during the winter. Topography also affects the climate in a variety of ways. The orientation of mountains to prevailing wind affects precipitation. Windward slopes, those face into the wind, experience more precipitation due to the orographic uplift of the air. Leeward sides of the mountains are in the rain shadow and thus receive less precipitation. Air temperatures are affected by sloping orientation as a sloping face into the sun will be warmer than those facing away. Temperature also decreases as one moves towards high elevation. So classification is a very interesting process. It's the grouping data or phenomena in related categories. So genetic classification is a climate classification based on causative factors. 
The empirical classification is a climate classification based on statistical data such as temperature and precipitation. So example of the generic classification uh, in terms of uh, what, ki what kind of air mass produced rain, for example, in Atlanta, Georgia, during the summer, and what produced in the winter. So the empirical classification is how much precipitation occur in the summer and how much precipitation occur in the winter, regardless which is affecting. So that's clear, genetic and empirical classification. So look in terms of a worldwide precipitation. The year precipitation average over the whole Earth is about 100 centimeters. We're talking about 39 inches. But this is distributed very unevenly. The regions of highest temperature rainfall are found in the equatorial zone and the monsoon area of Southeast Asia. Mid latitudes receive moderate amounts of precipitation, but little falls in the des desert reg regions of the subtropical or around the poles. If the Earth's surface were perfectly uniform, the long-term average rainfall will be distributed in distinct latitudinal bands. But situation is complicated by the pattern of global winds, the distribution of land and sea, and the presence of mountains. Because rainfall results for the ascent and cooling of moist air, the areas of heavy rain indicate regions of raising air whereas the deserts occur in the regions in which the air is warmed and dry during descent. In the subtropics, the trade winds bring plentiful rain to the east coast of the continents, but the west coasts tend to be dry. On the other hand, in high latitudes, the west coasts are generally wetter than the east coasts. Rain tends to be abundant in the windward slopes of the mountain ranges, but sparse in the lee sides.